Another round done and dusted on a very chilly Monday evening. It's Simon Morgan here and I'm joined alongside of Carlos Del Rio. Hello viewers, welcome to Wonderland District Soccer League, round 14 for the seniors, round 3 for the juniors mm. in the, the second league. Big boys uh, are getting towards the pointy end. It is, and Harris Street Reserve had all the matches. We had a Friday night match, we had two morning matches, yeah. and we had two afternoon matches scheduled for um, Sunday. Yes, it was, and busy, it was busy. a busy, busy day in Warrnambool and was. night. Um, but we'll talk about the, the junior soccer first, we shall. which was uh, played here at Harris Street in the, both grounds, the east and the west grounds, were utilised. When Jenny Flat Rangers hosted Corangamai, ah, oh, sorry, uh, Hamilton. Yes, Jenny Flat Rangers under 15s had the Hamilton <coughs> Raiders under 15 team. Uh, and and uh, they met previously, so this was a reverse fixture of the round two match. This time around, Jenny Flat had more players available, which is wonderful. Uh, a few players coming back from uh, sicknesses and uh, and availability, so it's good to see uh, the yellow and full team, and also a, uh, a good turnout from the red team here as well. Yes. Hamilton team in a lot of numbers. Um, Simo, yes. well, could we talk about that one because yeah. you were busy in another match? But uh, the halftime score was 3 1 to Hamilton, um, which is pretty close yeah. for this fixture. Well done to uh, both teams. Uh, well done to Hamilton for, for uh, taking the lead uh, sort of in the first half. Goal scorers in the first half were uh, Riley Pickering, picking a goal in the 15th minute. Uh, then it was. Uh, uh, actually, it was a 1 all at that point. Uh, Morgan, Morgan, Morgan Hunt for Jenny Flat uh, scored in the 25th minute to make it a 1 all game at that point. Uh, but uh, it wasn't long before Hamilton took the lead again this time through Lucas Eger. Well done, Lucas. Uh, 28th minute goal there. And uh, another one just before half time. In the 40th minute, Lucas got a brace in there to make it a 3 1 lead to the visiting red team from Hamilton. 3 1, second half, started again, and uh, Hamilton. Uh, yeah, the same yeah. uh, I saw a little bit of the second half. There is some highlights you're watching right now. We're having some highlights of both matches. Um, but at this point, Hamilton had now uh, pulled away with a 50th minute goal by Lewis Beaton. Well done, Lewis. But before that, Jenny Flat Rangers conceded an own goal, which meant Lee was awarded an own goal. So they went 2 0 down at the half. Uh, five minutes into the second half, so um, Hamilton had obviously pulled away a little bit there. Um, 60, 50, sorry, yeah, 55th minute goal, another one, five minutes later, Nathan Kaspers. Uh, so that was 3 0 in the half uh, before Hartley Russell also uh, took the penalty that was awarded to Jimmy Flat Rangers in the 65th minute with a very, very technical penalty. I just missed the footage of that camera so um, I don't have uh, footage of that goal but uh, I do have footage of the other goals that follow through Nathan dealing 68 minute goal just before uh, the end of the match there to make it a 7-2 win to Hamilton Raiders congratulations that um, made him uh, sit on top of the table at the moment uh, for a third week run yes uh, best <coughs> named for that match, uh, Fraser English, Keith Russell, Sammy Sammy Zahir. Zahir, mm -hmm. yes. That was for the Jenny Flight uh, Rangers team. Uh, for the Charlie Hamilton team, uh, Lachlan Brown Walsh, Luke Sega, and Riley Pickering. And the mom, the best for Hamilton. Well done to um, all those named the best. Uh, and congratulations to all the teams. I told them to play. Uh, well, so, English. Wait. Wait. A little bit of rain, yeah, there was a bit of rain. Thank you. Right. Moving along, now we had a second game at uh, Harris Street at the Mirai Carlos's Troopers, taking on Matthew Johnson Matthews and Scotts Creek Lions. Yes. 
and uh, previous encounters have uh, been a little bit one-sided, it must be said. Um, although, being there myself, the man with the whistle, whistleblower, I was thoroughly entertained by both teams and I can honestly say that there is a lot of positive signs for Scott's Creek Lions in this particular game. In this particular game, yes. Coming up against a very talented squad, um, uh, your, your, your lads and lasses. Um, the score, um, we'll break it down, um, didn't take long for the party to get started. No, or Malik decided to get things going and started off with a first minute goal. Um, ten minutes later, we had Darcy Johnson uh, picking up the goal in the eleventh minute, and then uh, Awal Malik again in the sixteenth minute to make it uh, three 0 in the space of uh, yeah sixteen minutes. Um, oh, but before that was Kane Ackley. He wanted to get in on goals. Parada uh, made it uh, made it four 0 and we had Kane again picking up the twenty ninth minute goal. And that made it five 0 half. Um, although. But that's uh, yeah, with that said, I think uh, from my perspective, my boys and girls, uh, and I think contingent of the girls and team this week as well, um, we were tested numerous times. You can see some of the footage here, but uh, they were not, certainly the game was not played in one half. So right, we were there, uh, so the ball was actually going um, backwards and forwards, which is great. The Lions were working the ball really well. We went dropping the heads as uh, a couple of our balls have, um, you know, uh, we scored a couple of goals early in the game, but uh, they pushed through. Congratulations to the boys and always to Johnson for um, keeping the spirits up with the kids. Yeah. Really, I really enjoyed it from the perspective that it was a, 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 a game. It was definitely so a game. They went together and, and uh, like I said, they could have probably put, it could have been a 5 3, 5 4 half. Yeah. Uh, they're just lacking a little bit of the finishing touches in front of goals, but also uh, they're coming across a very good defensive line, which I'm very lucky to have in the uh, an incredibly talented team in still as this, uh, this season. Um, but in that said, that, yes. the start of the second half, <coughs> the Lions that came out war roaring. Yes. Seb Hume, he picked up the goals in the 36 minute. We played 35 minute half, so pretty much in the first minute of the proceedings, yes. picked up the goal. He was leading by example, he was really, you know, um, trying to lead by example, sort of playing back and really sort of uh, you, you, you encouraging. Would've, you yes. would have seen the footage of the goal already because that, that was a shot a little bit earlier, but the, 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 the Lions held the ball, uh, they didn't lose it, they didn't panic, and eventually the uh, opportunity for Sam to take a shot over the head of uh, Cameron James came yes. through and uh, uh, all of the footage that I have here, that we have here is for the second half of both games. Yes. So uh, we don't have any of the footage of the first half, but what a ball that certainly sparked things up. It did, yes, it got them pumped and you know, thinking we They were leading one nil at that point of the half. I always say the half, every half is a nil all score sheet. Yep. Uh, so you go there to play it uh, again. Um, nil, one nil. Yep. Yeah, it was. Two nil. Two nil. That's right. Picking up a goal. Perhaps it took. Um, it did, admittedly, it did take quite a uh, a deflection. Uh, uh, a goal's a goal. Yeah. So we'll, we'll claim that one. And that was the 44th minute, and that made it two nil to Scott's Creek Lions in the second half. Um, from then on, though, that was pretty much it for Scott's Creek Lions in that regard. We had um, Kane Kane actually picking up a hat trick with a 51st minute goal. Oh, and Connor Bellman mm. scoring a goal there as well, I'm not quite sure the uh, time was that. Um, and then Cameron Jennings. It's a nice goal, coming out of the ball, small of the ball I think it was a header as well, wasn't it? No, it was a, it was a shot, yeah. Well, yeah. Shot from this on top of the box. Uh, put it away. Put it away, guys, because it's going to be down there. It's going to be down there. I'm sure you did. It certainly felt comfortable coming out. Yeah. I wasn't allowed. <laughs> took me by surprise as a coach. Uh, but well done, Cameron. He actually yeah, he did well and uh, he, count. he counted. And there was a final ball in the 69th minute with a minute left in the game. Yeah, give it to him. Give it to him. Putting it away and making it a, um, a, 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 a comprehensive 9 2 victory in the end. Uh, but Scott's Creek lines are really. I've said it before, but they really are on the up. Uh, the second half in particular, they played mm. a lot better. A 4-2 half scoreline, nothing to be ashamed of at all, uh, boys and girls. So, 
Uh, an interesting part of the next two matches, the uh, wife fixture here in Harris Street against uh, Jen Flood, Rangers. Uh, and then they have a home game uh, the week after. So uh, they're chasing the first week in, and it's not far away. Yeah, best yeah. song around Kane Ackley, get that to Lee and Pavel Malik for the uh, Mero Stingrays and for the Scots Creek ones, Michael Britton, Mike Potter, that an absolutely fantastic game guys. He's only a, it's not a tall, it's not a particularly tall lad, fairly uh, small lad must be said, but he played, I thought he played a really uh, yeah. solid game in goals and saved the penalty as well, which is no mean to so well done to you, as well as uh, Ryan Brummy and Seth Neal. That's right, there was a penalty save. Yes. Well done to, yeah, to keep the, uh, the, the Lions in the game at that point. Actually, that was, I think there was one of them two deal at the half as well. So. Uh, and Seth Neal, well done. Seth Neal took about you in the middle of the game, but uh, that made it at uh, top two seats with uh, Hamilton Raiders. Mero Stingo has equal on points. Uh, Only difference he comes into it now. Uh, and uh, Jet Flat Rangers uh, and Scott's Creek Lions. Mm -hmm. And the two of the four team table. Early days. Early days. So next week, uh, Mero Stingrays host Hamilton Raiders, top two, playing the first of the two reverse fixtures. And then. Jenny Flat Rangers host Corrine Mine Lions again here at Harris Street. Good on your kids. I hope we we'll get good weather for you guys next week. We'll see you next week. Moving on. Moving on. So, senior football started on a Friday night here at Harris Street. Yes. So, the first, uh, the first, uh, oh, sorry, the last Friday night game of the week, the fixture yes. before the uh, first elimination final, which will be a Friday night game. But this time around, the combatants were Deacon Dragons and Scott Squid Lions. Now, this is an interesting fixture, it may not look like it. We have sixth and fifth. I'll set the scene for you. Deep, the, but both of these teams, basically, whoever won, we're going to have a fairly half decent chance of making or taking fourth spot, depending on what happened. On Sunday, so both teams really needed a win. Scotts Creek could perhaps get away with a uh, result, but they preferably wanted to win. So that sets the scene. Both teams desperate for a win to keep their chances alive. Maybe. Mm -hmm. What happened, Mr. Del Rio? Well, we had uh, we had we had referees galore. We had uh, myself. We had Stan Branch, and we had Taff Taffara. Um, who was officiating this particular fixture. So make sure that everyone was on hand to give this game uh, its, its top billing. Mm. Because it was very important making sure that all the uh, officials that knew what, what, uh, what to do in a game of this nature were there. And uh, it was a fantastic, close, arm wrestle, some brilliant plays from both teams, not giving up much because they both knew that this was the game. Uh, and uh, in saying that, that the, the, the Deacon Lions played a great attacking game from the start. Eden Lyon picked up a 10 minute goal. Oh, wow. It was a very good goal, too. But Aiden was well worked out by the Deacon uh, midfield, uh, who had a full list. It was a freezing night, the bench was, uh, was very cold. Uh, in saying that, the, uh, the Lions also had uh, extra players on the bench. Uh, as well, but uh, and uh, they were missing a couple of the, 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 the players as well. I believe I think Ruby Guy might not have been there. Just trying to remember that who was there. Uh, no, he was not. Sam Alexander took uh, the gloves for the Lions after Bray uh, Wright was uh, uh, injured in the, the previous yes. week. Yes. Um, so Sam unfortunately couldn't get down quick enough for Aiden's first 10 minute goal to give the Lions the lead for I think all the, the second or third time. Yeah, Dragons, yeah, mm -hmm. a lead for the second or third time in yeah. this season. So, yeah. um, But they gave it away. 
que esse futebol é evidente. Eighty, many, 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 the young, one of the youngest players in the squad, 25th minute, fantastic, uh, good, well worked out goal, uh, little touches, breaking down the uh, taking defence finally and putting one pass. Um, um, Liam Drake, who I thought had a, a great game in goals. Uh, Campbell Scott was back in the side, but he couldn't displace a young goalkeeper because he'd been, he's been playing really well in goals the last uh, three, or, three or four goals. Um, and certainly kept the spot, but uh, couldn't stop Seb this time around. Team went through the country championships uh, against each other here in the, in the local league. But 25th minute goal, and then you read 25th minute goal, Aiden Lyon. Hey, Straight away. The Dragons were on fire. They didn't want to give that lead away, and they certainly did not. Uh, some fortunate. Um, sort of miss kicks or something like that as, as I remember and uh, the ball was won and in the Lions uh, sort of that's how they had the yard box and Aiden was there and he pounced on him and he pounced on him and he pounced on him 2-1 we're going to Clem 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 oh coming from Melbourne Geelong Melbourne Metro something Metro Super far away from here Rodney put him on not long before the 30th minute, probably uh, I reckon it was about the 25th minute mark, yeah. 26 minute mark, he came on. Uh, five minutes later, he, he, he made it. Put the ball in the back to the net, 33rd minute goal for Clem. Well done, Clem. To make it a two all, all half time scoreline. Mm. Very tight, very tense. But even then, before <coughs> that, just before the half time, we saw uh, James Plaza, naughty boy, picking up a yellow card. Yeah. Uh, uh, handball. It was unfortunate, uh, James. Jumped at the ball and he had his arm um, to the side of it and it's hit it. But if you're going to jump, of course you jump like this. Yeah. Make it a little bit easier. Uh, the referee, so uh, he was uh, actually crossing the box as well. So, yeah. um, could have been either way, but certainly uh, was a, ju a judge to be a uh, uh, yellow card worth of booking. So James um, picked up a uh, yellow card, but I don't think he's in any danger. Some finals at the moment, I think it would be his, uh, his first for the whole season yeah. as well. So, um, in saying that, that was in the 44th minute, mm -hmm. and then the whistle went to whistle went. 2 0. 2 2. Then, second half started. So, plenty of goals. Sort of 10th, 25th, 33rd. You know, there were constantly goals. Yeah. There was nothing going on. Nothing was going in. Both Starlight. teams were like really wrestling. They went, they went, and giving any. Um, they weren't giving the ball away. Most of the balls were actually uh, tackled or, or, oh, wow. or was a mis, misplaced, just just piffed out instead of bad passing towards the end. Yep. Um, but also uh, a lot of possession. Whenever one team had the ball, they kept it for a fair while. Mm -hmm. And then whenever the other team had it, the same. No real uh, good goal opportunities for either side. But in saying that, the goalkeepers played their mark. And in particular, our friend. Johnson Matthew mm. put on the gloves in the second half oh, yeah. for that game, and uh, I've seen I've seen Johnson playing goals, and, and he's, he's, I thought he was pretty average, <laughs> but <laughs> he but. proved me wrong. Oh, yeah. Johnson Matthew had an absolute cracker of a game in goals, unbelievable. I think the occasion might have lifted him up. Uh, certainly, uh, the Lions were looking for someone else to. Um, so the, the, Sam Alexander can come on the pitch because he's actually pretty handy on the pitch as a defender as well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but it was all happening. No goals. <laughs> no goals. Uh -huh. Twenty minutes to go. No goals. Uh -huh. Fifteen minutes to go. No goals. Uh -huh. Ten minutes to go. No goals. Uh -huh. Nine minutes to go. Whistle goes. Sam Alexander uh, just tips the back heel. Of um, I can't remember who the, the forward was, uh, but in the box, clear on goals, and the young fella fell over. Brr, penalty. 81st, 80th minute, or just on the on the 81st minute goal. 
Johnson and I had to face the might of Chris Bellman who stepped up and uh, he doesn't miss many. He's, uh, he's had one... I call him a dead ball specialist. He's just, he's just amazing with that dead he ball. Is, he is. I don't think he's missed by penalty. Oh, maybe he has, but he wasn't going to miss this one. <laughs> he will remind us if he has or hasn't. I'm sure. No, I'm sure, but he wasn't missing this one. He put it away to give his team the lead oh. for the third time in the game. The Dragons had, had got into the lead with nine minutes left in the game. Nine minutes. Nine minutes. They thought that must be enough. Come on, nothing's happened for the whole 80, 80 minutes. Oh, sorry, you know, 12, yeah. 20, 30 minutes of the half. Mm -hmm. Only uh, eight minutes left in the game. So the whistle goes for the restart. Dick yes. Dragons are 3 2 up. And within 30 seconds, there were 3 4. Can you believe Ooh, that? Wow, Can you believe it? And who was who is, who is this young fellow who oh. brought him back? Sebastian Hume. He made me mind him. I pick a Seb Hume. Seb Hume, well done. He got his brace. Eight Brace. Eight second minute. Equalizer. <coughs> the equalizer that they were looking for mm -hmm. came in quite early. And uh, that goal probably was a bit of a shock to the Dragons. Mm. I could have had match. <laughs> We had seven minutes to get something out of the game. A draw was not going to be enough for no, the Dragons. No, need, Dragons needed a win. The Dragons needed a Absolutely win. Absolutely needed a win. And um, they certainly pressed up. Had a couple of uh, good opportunities again with um, with Aiden Lyon up front. Timmy White dropped in the defensive midfield role. Young mm. uh, Connor Bellman uh, ran his, uh, his little hard out in down at the wing there. But, um, and of course, Lara Angarani never gave up. Playing so does she ever? She doesn't. I don't think she does. She doesn't. And then Luck fell to one team. 86th minute. They, um, <clears throat> it was a quick interplay and the ball land, uh, sort of landed at uh, Clem's feet with uh, not on goals. He was probably well, fairly uh, probably caught up between uh, 30 minutes away from goals. Mm. Picked up the ball. And he decided to go for a run. Oh, yeah. And he wow. ran, 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 ran with the ball, went through about three different league defenders, mm -hmm. jumped one tackle, and uh, still had the ball at his feet, brought it all yeah. the way to the box, and he scored a great shot, low shot, 86 minutes to give the Lions an incredible 4 3 lead. The first time they've taken the lead, they've been chasing yes. the game the whole time. 86 minutes, three minutes left. Was there anything left in the tank? There was there there was wasn't much left in the tank because both teams were exhausted and psychologically and emotionally um, there was no further score line. That was it. It was a real there was one shot I believe from the from the dragons and went over the bar. Oh. Uh, but Johnson had it covered. I said Johnson probably saved about three shots on target during that half. Um, which uh, meant the Johnson was actually named one of the bests mm. for the Lions. The Lions' bests were Clem, Seb Hume, and Johnson Matthew. Congratulations, Lance. You guys were certainly one of the differences that you have in close games. Uh, sometimes it's millimeters, mm. all right? Sometimes it's uh, minutes or seconds, and uh, certainly in this game it was down to who was going to stand up the strongest. Uh, commiserations to the Dragons, but you guys fought an uh, incredible mm. battle. Chris Bellman, Liam Drake, Aiden Lyon, them in the best yeah. for their team, which meant that the Lions kept their finals hope alive oh, and well and truly alive because they snatched uh, an extra three points to uh, make him on par with my team, the Steel mm. Race. Yes. Uh, at the point, uh, 13. Point ish. Yes. With one game remaining. Mm. And that would spell the end for Deacon Dragons. Yep. Had Dragons possibly. won that, they could possibly they had the chance to actually go um, live for both teams. Mm. Uh, but it wasn't to be. Commiserations Dragons, uh, not taking part in finals at, uh, at the end of that game, but uh, always great to have the, uh, the Dragons war yeah. and the fire breathers uh, in our league. Next year, and I honestly think that next year they're gonna, it's going to be a Big tilt at it because they've got they're starting to gel and hopefully they can keep that same side. Mm. Yeah, they've got a lot of youth. 
Yeah, which is well, great. Yeah, but that's just going to get better with experience and age. And we do need that experience there, so uh, stay tuned. They might have some someone in mind to come up and take uh, reins here with giving them a little coaching, mm -hmm. like what the Lions have done with uh, Ronnie this mm -hmm. season. Uh, just quickly, because we're talking a fair bit, there were, that was a Friday match. There were two matches scheduled for uh, Sunday afternoon. 1 p.m. was supposed to be the match of the rehearsal. round. The dress rehearsal. Uh, Jennifer Rangers were hosting Hamilton Raiders. Unfortunately, the Raiders called uh, on Sunday morning to say that they were really struggling to get enough players to come mm. to Warrnambool, and they unfortunately were disappointed with themselves to be able that they had to fall for this particular yeah. fixture, which is, uh, you know, it, was a, a, it wasn't good, but it was good for your team. Yeah, in, way, in a way, we had a, a, a light training run on Sunday, and um, the, 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 I'll be able to speak for most of the lads, unless, um, yeah, it's nice to win it, but I think it would have been nice to have been able to play the game and win it on our terms, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, um, that's just the way it goes. It goes that. Some of them travelling as well. I know mm -hmm. that oh, yeah. they had a uh, few kids away from university opening days and things like that. Yeah. And they were a very young side. So they missed out. But uh, I mean, Hamilton's been really good. They've actually had, last season, they had two forfeits at their end. Mm -hmm. Obviously, teams here from Warrnambool. Yes. Uh, and uh, they know how it feels when the uh, teams don't show up. So, uh, yeah. Exactly, they're disappointed not being able to put a team together, but it won't be the last time because no. we will be meeting them. You could possibly meet them at the twice. Major finals. maybe twice. We'll see how uh, could, could things be, transpire. There could be two more games left for you, but uh, what that did do is uh, hang Gen Flat Rangers the minor premiership. So, congratulations um, to the Rangers, you have been the, uh, the form team of the season um, and uh, well deserved of the top. Billing. Congratulations, Simo. Oh, thank you guys now uh, premiers. One round to go, yeah. and we'll talk about that later. But the second game, which now became the game, the, the game of the, the round, round. Yes. was between Mero Stingrays and Thunder Hawks. Let me paint a picture for your card yes, box. Please. So, we've got third and fourth. Mero Stingrays need to win this game to ensure that they at least take fourth spot. Thunderhawks, well, they're pretty much safe. They're going to be top three or four. But if they can win, they'll be definitely top three. If they lose, well, depending on what happens in the following week, they could still do But, more will come. Mm -hmm. Now, I was there. We got some footage as well. Um, not much happened in the uh, first half of what I can uh, gather. The score one was nil all. The second half, though, well, it was a tussle. It was an, an absolute tussle, and we really didn't get a lot of action until the very last few minutes. There was plenty of action, but not at the back of the net. No, a lot of a lot of middle park, and uh, it was it was a game that was uh, as a, uh, I had to play. I shouldn't have played. Really, you know, sort of maybe the boots for the team, and. Um, it was an hour I must oh. say that Thunderhawks are a very good team. Defensively. And my team played a very strong game too. Yeah. It was. It was a, it, I think there was hard, there was very little to separate us from separate us. Yeah. Very little. And uh, both the Hawks uh, acknowledged that at the end and my boys and uh, girls acknowledged that as well because we knew I was a state in a way. Um, was uh, played obviously in ground number two, which is usually not the weaker ground, but because of the rains that we've been having, uh, we have to actually play in ground one, giving it a rest. Uh, but in saying that, it was actually felt better this particular ground uh, that we have, I think, yep. few, so it's not been as muddy. Um, but everybody that I, everybody in this game, 22 players or 24 players, I mean, actually made that same kind of contribution towards the match. Very little, very few errors. Um, my backline played a incredibly good line catching out the, uh, the fellow horse of sides on a number of occasions. They've been very disciplined, which we have to be, because they had the likes of uh, Dan Sedgley, Warren Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Warren, and um, Andrew Linsa. And of course, Josh Woodrow, who's a, yeah, he's a steam train as well. And uh, 
you win on that game, it wasn't going to happen. So in the back line of uh, Nigel, Gray, Alex Sheedy, Austin Del Rio and myself, we were so we had to be and I think on two occasions it broke us and we were lucky that we had back dangling Irvine for his first match in six, seven weeks uh, after an injury he sustained in school for soccer. Um, Didn't look out of place either. No, 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 he played a, he played a real game. Dangling, congratulations. We've been, we've been lacking a, a goalkeeper for uh, during our slump, even myself. Uh, but uh, having you back is certainly a difference. Harley Russell kept their team and playing their goals. Yes, playing their game goals. Congratulations, Harley. Corey Lee. Corey Lee. Corey Lee. Yes. Injured, taken out last week. Uh, the Russell brothers uh, have a lot of heart. They love the game. They like to play hard. They got a lot of games. <laughs> and his brother, um, Harley uh, and Keith. His brother, Keith, uh, played a pretty good game too. Yeah, yeah, very strong for a young man. But, Simo, yeah. luck finally yeah, fell our it took, way. It did. It, has, it took 87 minutes, a whole 87 minutes. Told Merrick picking up a girl. Did you get it on film? I think I did. Well, I, I hope you, so. I'll be seeing it the other way. 87th minute, 1 0. Well, as we saw from the Friday night game, anything can happen in a small space of time. It did. So then Blackburn picked up an 89th minute goal. And that was going to pretty much make it a 2 0 win to the Merai Steam Race, perhaps pulling what some would say a bit of an upset. Third, uh, fourth against Bird and the, the lower ranked team coming away with the win. And with that being the case, Mr Del Rio, that was going to be the um, the dress rehearsal for the minor semi-final. So yes, as it stands out, mm. the top four are now cemented. Yes, that is it. That is uh, I was relieved. Uh, the team were relieved as well. Um, Mathematically, the Lions cannot catch us because of the difference. Um, unless they put 30 goals plus, they need to come to next week. And we can be brutally honest, it's probably not going to happen. Could happen, but you need to take them. But in saying that, we still have a game, and it's the receivers are playing for the future soccer. Maybe a one-sided battle, but I don't know that's Mr. Del Rio. Well, yes, I, I, I agree. <laughs> one-sided for sure. Yes. Um, but we are now uh, with one round to go. The top four have been uh, consolidated. So uh, we'll start with uh, commiserations to Dickin Dragons and Korean Lions for this time. Yes. Looking forward to. Uh, Maybe the whole, having a cup competition earlier pre-season next, next year. Um, but you guys uh, certainly have some talent there, some youth, and uh, I really, really appreciate the fact that you guys um, are there mm. as part of the one world industry. So Soccer good. League, Ronnie, Chris Bellman, uh, Brad Adams, Michael Dendor, and Turnip. Here at, uh, those respectful clubs, um, but they there's, there's still got one match left to play. Yeah. But congratulations, J Flight Rangers, on picking up the minor premiership and uh, Hamilton cementing the second position where they will play the Northern Elimination semi final on uh, Sunday after the Yes. Still a fair way to come. So, but with round 15 is the main priority for all the teams, and there'll be an opportunity to fine tune, uh, you know, play some different uh, people in different positions. Decisions just, made. Hmm. Maybe I'm looking. The team race can finish third, and I think we're going to try to get third. You're going to try to get third? We're going to try to get third. Oh, okay. I can't like I said, it's only going to be a one sided, one -sided game, I'm sure. Uh, so, we'll make third for sure. <laughs> Uh, well, um, the Thunderhawks, no, no, that's, it's not up to us whether we're yeah. playing or not. The Thunderhawks are playing Dick and Dragons, uh, so the Dragons have uh, something to play for. Yep, a bit of pride. And it'll be an interesting uh, fixture. Uh, and then uh, the Steam Rides play Jimmy Flat Rangers. Both of those matches are at 1 o'clock yes. here at Harris Street, which will serve on Sunday. The... 
Uh, yes. The 11th, 11th of August. Uh, and following that, there will be a 3 p.m. match between Hamilton Raiders and Corrine Mike, the Lions. And then the Lions might be something, something out of this game uh, as a final fixture for the season. So, WDSL, everyone's talking finals now. Yeah, they are. Everyone will be focusing on getting that last week. <laughs> Um, no team has won it twice. The teams that are in the finals, with the exception of the Hawks, have won it once. Yes. The Hawks, of course, <coughs> in their debut season. Jenny Flat Mariners won it in the inaugural season. They changed the name to Rangers and they haven't won anything since then. But this could be the one that they, the one they, they win it under the, the true name. Will the steamroller keep going? Will the upset of the year happen? Will it be a back-to-back -back premiership for the state? There's a lot to talk about and we will be talking about that later on, uh, viewers. But in saying that, we are going to say goodnight from Paris Street. So uh, stay tuned. Go WDSL. Go Steve Rice!